Hello everyone, in this video I'll be talking about some project management tasks in preparing to launch the project. The learning objectives for this video are as follows. After watching, students should understand a high-level overview of the goals of project management, become familiar with project estimation, and learn how to use work breakdown structures and project work plans to assist in systems projects. Project management is a critical piece of the systems development life cycle. That's why a whole module and chapter is dedicated to it. Because project management and its associated tools are so critical to systems analysis and design, the extra credit opportunity I've provided for you this semester involves learning how to use Microsoft Project, a project management tool. Project management should be covered in more detail in other courses or outside of class. This isn't a project management course, but project management is critical. If you're interested in pursuing project management as your career or you'd like to learn more about it, I highly encourage you to visit PMI.org. This is the website of the Project Management Institute an institute that promotes tools and best practices for project managers. ISDS 351 also covers a little bit more about IT project management. A project manager's main job is a balancing act. Project management involves making key trade-offs among three critical aspects of a project. Project cost, project time, and project size. Modifying any one of these requires adjusting the others. If the project becomes larger, it's either going to cost more or take more time. If you want to reduce the time of the project, you're either going to have to reduce its size or increase the cost. If you want to save costs in a project, you'll either have to reduce the size and or reduce the amount of time you allocate toward it. While management often wants a system that is fast, good, and cheap, you can't have all three. Project estimation is the process of assigning projected values for time and effort towards an IT project. This includes scheduling and staffing issues. Always be conservative when estimating how much time and effort you'll need in a project, because you never know what turns a project is going to take. There are many sources that you can use to create estimates of time and effort. You can base your estimates first by the type of development methodology you're using, such as waterfall or agile methods. Second, you can base your estimates on actual previous projects that you've managed in the past. Third, you can speak with experienced developers who have worked on similar projects. At the beginning of a project, estimates begin as a range, but then they become more specific as the project progresses. Here are two more techniques for creating time and effort estimates. You can use industry standards, which I'll talk about on the next slide, or you can use function point estimation. Function point estimation is not something we'll go into detail in for this class, but Appendix 2A in the textbook gives you more detail about this interesting way to create estimates for time and effort in projects. Here are some industry standard percentages. While every project is different, on average, about 15% of project time should be allocated for planning, 20% for analysis, 35% for design, and 30% for implementation. However, the larger the project becomes, the higher the percentage you'll spend on the actual implementation of the project. In many large projects, implementation could be the longest and most expensive phase. Based on these percentages, you can calculate how much time to spend on analysis, design, and implementation based on how much time you've spent in project planning. For example, if you've spent four months in planning the project, then you might anticipate that the entire project will take about 26.66 months. Then you could calculate the amount of time for the remaining phases of the project. A few months is rarely realistic with any project of substance. Projects differ, but many large projects take in the range of one to four years to be developed. Scheduling a project works best when you first identify the tasks that you need to complete and then organize them in a top-down approach using a work breakdown structure. A work breakdown structure is essentially an outline of all the tasks that need to be done, organized in different levels. In this example, if my project is to grade some programming assignments, I can break down that project into one, creating the grading plan, two, preparing the projects for grading them, and then three, doing the actual grading. Under each of those three steps, I can list the specific tasks that need to be done to complete those steps. After the work breakdown structure is created, you can start assigning time, people, and resources to these tasks to create a more detailed project work plan. A typical entry in a project work plan includes the name of the task to be done, start and finish dates, who is assigned to the task, any deliverables associated with it, whether or not the task has been completed, its priority, and any resources needed to complete the task, as well as estimated and actual time spent on it. When completed, a project work plan looks something like this. Each task is listed on a row of spreadsheet, with the characteristics from the last slide listed across the various columns. 
Project management software is the best software to use to create a project work plan. A project work plan like this can be created very easily using Microsoft Project. However, to create a project work plan for your homework this week, you can use Excel or Word. This is a nice example to show you how to format a project work plan nicely, but don't follow this example too closely when you're completing the homework. First of all, this project work plan only shows the design phase, and you'll also want to include planning, analysis, and implementation steps in your project work plan. Secondly, because you haven't arrived yet at the design phase, you don't know as many specific design details as are shown in this example. For example, you don't know what type of database you'll be using. Finally, most project work plans have many more dependencies than are shown here. After watching this video, you should now understand a high-level overview of the goals of project management. You also should be familiar with project estimation and various techniques for creating estimates. You also should have learned how to use a work breakdown structure and project work plans to assist in systems projects.